Hi, welcome to episode three of Ghana Midlet by the Goethe Institute Ghana. My name is Fafali and as usual, I'm your host. On this episode, we are exploring the world of publishing. What does it take to publish here in Ghana? What do you need to know? What are the checks and balances that, have to, that you have to make sure are in place for you to publish here? So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. I have two very important personalities in the house and I will allow them to introduce themselves, starting from my immediate left. All right, my name is Asari Kuledu Yamwa. I'm a publisher and the president of the Ghana Publishers Association. Uh, I'm also an aspiring author, and that will be an interesting discussion that I will want to. <laughs> okay, <laughs> welcome. Thank you. My name is Nana Ared um, So I'm an author, uh, and then um, later became a publisher, mm. and now also a bookseller. So uh, you can see that I straddle the, <laughs> the entire supply chain right. of, uh, mm. of, of books. Um, I have a number of books, um, and uh, I also exist to support the, the output of uh, fellow publishers like Mr. Yamwa. Okay, welcome. Thank you. So, let's dive in. Um, I'm tempted to go the usual way of asking questions, like <laughs> how we're doing exams. What is publishing? <laughs> <laughs> Who would take that for me? Mr. Yamwa? All right. Uh, when you ask what is publishing, publishing, the, the simplistic interpretation is that to make things public. Oh. Uh, but when you come down to the professional aspect of publishing, then you are looking at the processes that creative writing or literary materials are taking through to make them public, either for sale or for free. So it is more or less the process of translating or, as it were, uh, preparing literary materials or literary by way of uh, literature, drama, poetry, and other uh, creative writings into legible materials like the book for public consumption. Yes. Okay. Anna, please, you have something to add to yeah, that? Yeah, just to add the forms and... Um, uh, in which such publications will come out. So you would have, you can have a physical book, and in terms of the physical book, you could have the paperback, the hardback, um, you have the audio book uh, now, um, also you have the e-book, mm. and I guess especially for our um, uh, special needs uh, friends, you, should, you could add Braille as, as, as well. So these are some of the formats uh, in which uh, we will have the published uh, work coming out. Okay. So here in Ghana, it's quite easy for people to say I'm publishing a book, but the name of the company that you're going with ends in a printing firm, mm -hmm. like ABCD printing mm -hmm. firm. Mm -hmm. So what are the differences between a publisher and printing firm? You know, uh, mostly in Europe and the Americas, you have the traditional publishing houses who are strictly doing publishing, mm -hmm. i.e. taking raw manuscripts through the process up to the end of having a book published. In Asia, there are printing houses who are also doing publishing. Okay. So you will realize that a book goes to a certain printing house, there is, there is a publishing department who will work on it, and eventually they, with their own machines, they will print the books. But the, as I said, the general book industry is known as publishing, mm. because publishing is the engine house of the book industry. They are supposed to liaise between the market, the author. So printing is an aspect of publishing, mm. but printing is not publishing. But printing is an aspect of publishing. The publisher is responsible for sourcing print for the book to be out for sale or for distribution. So if you say I'm a printing house, somebody says I want to publish a book or I have a manuscript, I want to it published. It is not just about the printing because 
people often um, either misconstrue or lack of understanding of what the publishing business, uh, this thing entails. We just think about printing, just that. But the publisher, as I said, is responsible for sourcing materials, raw literary materials from the author, sometimes commissioned, sometimes unsolicited, or sometimes uh, solicited from uh, authors. Process it in-house through the editorial stream. You know, that is where the details yeah. of publishing goes on, the editorial department. Mm. So the difference between a book that has not gone through traditional publishing and a book that has gone through traditional publishing is the quality in details at the editorial department. Mm. Yes. Wow. So you kept mentioning traditional publishing. So Nana, um, what... Is traditional publishing a type of publishing? Like, are there other types as well? Yeah, but b b before I tackle that, let me just add to what uh, Mr. Yamwa said. I, I want to break it down because I, I, li I like processes. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's uh, how I, my, my mind works. So when you take publishing, he, he just said it all, but you have basically, say, four main stages. You have the manuscript acquisition. So the manuscript comes, lands on the, on the table of the, of the publisher. You have the editing, you know. So the editing really fine tunes the work, as he said. So sometimes you look at the book that comes into the audit editing process, you won't recognize it when it comes out of the editing process because that's really thorough, and you can get the book stripped up, you know, decimated, put together, refined. Then you go to the design stage of, of the book, which is where you are designing the cover, you are designing the layout, you are designing the cover, both front and back and the spine, you know, fully designed, and then the printing, okay? And then perhaps you add launch and distribution. So like he just said, printing is a subset, it's just only one out of the four stages that I have mentioned uh, right now. But back to your question about traditional publishing and other forms of publishing. So basically broad-based, you have traditional publishing, that was what used to be in the past, and then um, non-traditional publishing. So what is traditional publishing? I'll explain that and you can clearly understand what is not. So traditional publishing is where the, public, the manuscript goes to the publisher. Like you said, mostly solicited or commissioned. Okay. So, or you have an author that you've worked with already, has a new script, has come to you. The, audit, the, the publisher assesses the work and decides that this is something I want to invest in and pay royalties later to the author. So the main work, the input of the author is getting the manuscript um, submitted, working on the edits that come from the, the, the editor. That's all. All the entire process, the four processes I've mentioned, are managed under the ambit of the publisher. And when all is done, the book is distributed, uh, it is sold, the publisher's um, liability or responsibility to the author is to pay royalties, which is a percentage of, say, the, the sale price or the cover price or some um, net profits from sales. Okay, so if this is not done and um, the publisher gets, and now we have self-publishing, or what I like to call author-funded publishing, and I'll explain. Okay. So the manuscript goes to the publisher, and publishers have a limited uh, amount of resources mm -hmm. in each year, for instance. So they, they will decide that um, I can only publish, say, five books this year. Okay, so the, other, the author goes to uh, Adil's pub uh, publishers, which is uh, Mr. Yamwe's uh, uh, business, and he says, okay, I, my resources for this year are done, but, so, but you are the one I want to help publish this. Okay, so then you have two ways of non-traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. He can then commission Mr. Yamwe that I am going to fund this publishing but I want you to manage the entire process as you would 
if you were doing traditional publishing or if you were investing in it. So let's say the publishing process, and I'm, we'll come to the, to the uh, uh, figures later, but let's say 100 uh, CDs is what it's going to um, uh, take, including printing. I'm going to put that 100 CDs up front as the author, but I am going to commission you to handle the entire process for me and then pay you management fees to cover that. So in that wise, it is technically not different in terms of the quality of the output the quality of the work that has gone in from what he would have done if he was, he was doing traditional publishing. Mm. So that's author-funded publishing, mm. which is under the ambit of a well-known publisher. Then the third bit is what people call self-publishing. <laughs> so self-publishing means that he, he, the person picks his manuscript. Usually they are in a hurry. So he wants it to come, say, out in two months. So he's not... He gives the, 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 the manuscript to maybe a friend who has uh, completed <laughs> an English degree <laughs> in Legon. Um, but not all English uh, degree holders are editors. Mm. So he would go through and then he would find a friend who um, can do some designs, do the design and giddy, 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 uh, goes to, 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 to print. So usually that's, that's self-publishing. But if... For me, if you are going to use um, an experienced publisher to go through all these gates, then it is author-funded uh, publishing, and the output can be as best as good as uh, one which has been traditionally published. So having said that, and I have gone through the entire stage, I tell people that even if you have to do self-publishing, which is self-funding your publication, ensure, like he said, especially the editorial bit, that you are using a professional um, editor who is putting in those, that sort of thoroughness mm. to go through. You use a professional book designer who is doing it as he would have done if he was um, uh, working for a, a proper publisher. So when it comes out, at least in terms of content and um, output in display, it is not um, terrible. Yeah, actually, uh, what Nana has explained to you uh, is just about getting the various types of publishing. Uh, the reason why the traditional publisher will always insist on allowing or the author allowing the traditional publisher to go through these processes is not to interfere in the publishing process. Mm. You see, the publisher needs independence of thought. Mm. Books are materials that seek to shape the minds and the disposition of people who read them. And it is important that you make sure that all the necessary details, making sure that the material that comes out is authoritative, mm. very compelling, and of course, independent, is to allow the person process to go through. If you want a, an author tells you, I need this book urgently. Mm. I want to pay for the management editorial services so that you are able to fast track or more or less take it out of the, the slush box. In publishing houses, we have a certain large box of those big parts of a room in which manuscripts are dumped. Mm. Once that are coming unsolicited, are put there. What they do is they have expert readers mm. who come there from time to time, going through the manuscripts to read them, to see whether some of them are very good. That could be taken out of the queue and done with it. So if, for instance, the author decides that I'm going to be, give you money, do this for me, it may compromise the independence decisions that independent decisions that are taken within the editorial stream. Mm. So the publisher, traditional publisher, will always argue that I should be left alone. When do you give me my manuscript? So in our agreements, we usually tell you that manuscripts submitted could take about a year mm. before decisions are taken on them, because it has to take time for it all to go through. 
the publishing business because people, especially those doing academic books, would want their works to come out within the expecting time frame. Yeah. And therefore, we want to have their way within the publishing system. It was not working out. That was why this self-publishing ideas and so that you go out there, do your whole thing. But when you pick a book that has been self-published without an input of a publisher, with that, the one that has been, had an input of a publisher, you clearly see the difference. You will clearly see the difference, especially in content design, as Anna said, because the publisher has in-house styles which are time-tested mm. that are used for each and every category of publication. So if they are novels, we have a style that they must conform. If they are textbooks, there's a style that they conform. Even illustrations in books. Oh. Houses have styles yeah. that the books must conform. So you can pick a book easily, and I will tell you, for our novels, we have the same size and design. So any novel you pick from Adex should be 4.5 by 7.5 inches, font size is this, and all that. That uh, is what you see. Publishing houses have their in-house styles. Every publishing house has its house style that identifies the publisher identify the publishing house. So the vanity publishing, hybrid publishing, these are all self-publishing models. Yeah. yeah, some of them I'll pay for you, give me your publishing services, I'll pay. That one, you don't pay royalties. Yeah. The publisher will not pay royalties because you are paid for everything. He, he prints the books, you come for them. The hybrid is, I will pay you up to a point. Yeah. You continue to do that. The royalty, instead of a traditional 10%, give me 25% because I have invested oh. in the work. So these are all models that are now very flexible for book publication. Okay. Yeah. So following up just on the royalties, um, you said traditionally it's 10%. Is that an, uh, like something that runs through all publishing houses? Yes, basically all over the world, for a startup, mm. you, unless perhaps you are a very popular writer, that you negotiate royalty with the publishing house. But for a startup that has submitted the manuscript to the system, usually it's 10%. So, Mr. Yama, you mentioned taxes as mm. one of the mm. challenges in this industry. What other challenges are there, like looking at all the major stakeholders? from the author to maybe those you have source printing to the publisher, the editors? What are some of the challenges? You know, the, the book industry or the publishing industry, as I said, they are used interchangeably because publishing is the engine room of the, of the industry. Uh, you have a lot of things that perhaps, if they were in place, mm. we would have seen a different picture in the Ghanaian book industry. One key component has been, as I said, the absence of paper mills in the country. And therefore, anything paper we import from Asia, Europe, and uh, as far as Brazil, yeah. wow. you see. So the cost of shipment, cost of the paper, and to add to it, the tax imposed by government on those. The argument is that papers, paper could also be used for advertising, and other, but we have also been dialoguing with the government to set aside some form of warehouses where oh. papers dedicated for books will then be placed and be monitored, and so that the taxes will then either be reduced or removed. The second one is the motivation to authors. You know, what usually pertains in any publishing house, what it's sought, if all things were running according to what pertains in Europe. The author writes, submits a manuscript. Oh. The publisher sees it, likes it, and advance royalty. So the agreement is signed. We are going to pay you 10%. But we are giving you 2,000, 3,000 Ghana CDs as advance royalty, which will be deducted from the sale. What that does is that it settles the author, giving him that permanent of mind 
to continue writing, not to bother to chasing publishers with the manuscript, going around looking for money. You see, it settles you to where he continues to write more. That is how you see that Kolo uh, Perlo, this Brazilian writer, is writing over 30 books, mm. 40 books. Mm. Because there's some publishing house who has secured his, his works. Mm. I can say, Nana, write for me. For the next 10 years, all your, your books, I'm going to buy them. And that one, the contract is signed. Maybe 200, 500,000 Ghana cities is given to you every year. Go ahead and do it. So be, the market is not favorable mm. because of the inconsistent uh, marketing and also book promotion activities that we have in the country. Reading is a habit that is acquired. We learn reading. And if we do not start with the children, encouraging them to read, and we get to the upper level, and we want people to read, it is difficult. That habit has not been acquired. Mm -hmm. And without reading, book selling in this country is going to be difficult. The library authority has the capacity also to procure books because they have to open regional libraries, local libraries, and all that, school libraries. So it's the resources that are allocated out of the budget that is given to them to, buy, to procure books and stock the libraries. That is also limited. And apart from that, the general market for book reading, generally, if you ask me sincerely, how many books I've bought in a year to read on my own, it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> and that happens with every adult in this country. Mm. You see, but it is part of the motivation and also the contribution of us all to promoting the book industry where authors will be also be encouraged to write more. Because if there is a suspension of the author's work, education is going to suffer in this country. So we, are, we have this challenge with the distribution, the book networks, that it is difficult. Economically, you may have the challenge that, for instance, if you have two cities yeah. and you are given the options, what will you do with the two cities? You'll go and buy food. <laughs> no, well, Papa, you'll buy a book. I will buy a book. <laughs> but if we are able to appreciate our economic circumstance, yeah then, of course, there will be some money available also to take care of some of these things. Okay. Yeah. So, well, Nana, do you have something to add <laughs> yeah, to that? So, so what he said, you know, that, that bit about being able to pay advance to authors, that can be done because on the other side, the publisher is assured of some uptake. You know, so he knows that perhaps he's printing a thousand copies. 500 is already secured, secured. because that output... Uh, it's, it's, it's an equation, you know, yeah. Um, the other thing he, he touched on, which is a passion of mine, especially with all the advocacy we've been doing with literary um, activities and even um, the bookstore I run, Book Noob, is to focus on an untapped market, reading for pleasure. You know, and just yesterday, someone was asking me whether uh, Ghanaians read, and I said, yes, and there is potential for us to develop. Can you imagine half of Ghana buying one book a year to read mm. for pleasure. That's clearly 12 million books. Can you imagine, Mr. Yamua, what 12 million Zombies, books yeah. purchased, purchased can do to the, to, the, to the industry in just a year? Mm. 12 million books being bought, not for academics, not textbooks, but for pleasure. You know, it, it will change the, the, the market. So that's another place we, we have left... Um, uh, on tapped for a long while that we have to push for people to read for pleasure. And if we can do that, then all these books that he's talking about, especially non-trade books, which are the biographies and novels, novels and all books, of that, yeah. that's where creativity yeah. is really um, active. And if we can get people to um, patronize these works, then we can explode the, the creativity pot in the okay. country. No, no, um, Before you come in, yes, please. we need to accept that books are cultural materials. Yes. 
Okay, so mm. before um, I allow you to continue, I think it comes into the next question, which is to what extent is the reading culture affecting the publishing industry? And you had already started talking about it. So I just wanted to throw that question in there, then the discussion can go on. So let's look at it from, because you earlier on said, um, if there was the market for it, it's easier. And then I also just give a very nice example. I'm now fantasizing about 12 million Ghanaians, let's say yeah. buying one yeah. book titled Adam yeah. and how much that would impact the industry. So that means there's a gap between our reading culture and what the industry is producing. Is that it? Is it that the materials that are being produced are not appealing to the Ghanaian market? Or the Ghanaian is now catching up on the reading wave? I, 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 I think that uh, there are abundance of quality materials in the mm. country. Books that are being written. I was reading the Sennheis book, an excellent uh, novel. You yeah. see, that uh, perhaps potentially, if there are marketing opportunities, this book should sell, you see, and many others that are in the country. So it is just not about lack of books. It is about lack of appropriate policies and oh. guidelines in the system to encourage reading and to promote book purchasing. Oh. Hmm. You see, it will be wonderful, for instance, if the Ghana Revenue Authority tells that for any book that you buy, we will take it out of your tax. Mm. That would be great. <laughs> you see, that is where I was coming that if as a country we appreciate that books and the production of books is a cultural activity that needs to be protected, that needs to be enhanced because our writers sitting down have storehouse of initiative and imagination. Mm. These things must come out for people to read. You see, they share their thoughts. Every writer will want to share their thoughts, their dreams, and all that. And those are the works that have changed the dynamics and this of other countries. Shakespeare's works were able to transform Europe, especially UK, and even the colonies. Today, we are still using works of Shakespeare because they are brilliant works that people still take cue from an advantage of. So there are thoughts that are hidden, and we must encourage writers, people, to come out with the stories. That can only be done under a cultural policy. So as I'm saying, the government acknowledges that they are important. We should let the children start reading at an early age and inculcate that reading habit. We are promoting literacy. We are giving the opportunity for people to read, to develop their analytical skills. Just not reading for pleasure, and I said, but you read books, especially novels and creative works, they develop your analytical skills. Mm. Yes. So we, skills. we need to look at all this. That perhaps has given the impression that we don't read in mm. the country. Mm. But as I told you, the economic challenges, one. The opportunities, you see, is another. Okay. The enabling circumstance that will allow you to walk on one Sunday afternoon to the a nice bookstore or soup where there's small bookstores and you want to pick a book and go and read. That yeah. enabling circumstance should be there. Should be there. Otherwise, there are enough materials in the country. Okay, Mr. Yama. Yeah. So, Nana, what do you mm. have to add? I want to add a bit about uh, distribution. You know, so getting, like you mentioned, the enabling environment for people to also get access to books. Somebody is at Jiaya and Quanta, <laughs> wishing to get um, uh, a book by Aisha uh, Arunata yeah. to, to read. How does the person assess that book? Or wanting to get a road to KJB yeah. by uh, Asari Kunedu to, to read. How does the person assess that book? How can we ensure that within every district, there is a great bookstore that people mm. Uh, can, can, can get uh, their hands to. There are options, there are, are solutions like um, 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 online bookstores which are coming up, but not everybody can also go online. So how do we reduce the barriers to people's desires to get 
fantastic books uh, to read. So it's the entire ecosystem, and that's why I, I agree with Sayamwa about the policy. Yeah. Nothing happens unconsciously. Yeah. Every improvement is conscious. So what is the policy that is driving us all to ensure that we become a reading nation again? How are the libraries risk talking to ensure that when kids go there, they are, they are interesting books that they can read, they are other activities that they can do. What are the pool factors that will take um, uh, kids to libraries? Not just the state libraries. Are uh, individuals investing in community libraries? Are uh, individuals even looking at um, uh, bookstores as social enterprises? Yeah. It's the entire ecosystem that we must build. But it must start with the direction. It must start with the policy. Yeah. And it must be conscious. I agree, especially with the policy, because whilst you were talking, I started picturing myself some of the challenges I have received or I have faced as a reader mm. in trying to get a reading material. You go online, you see a book you love, yeah. you order it, and delivery is times two of the cost of the book. And you're asking yourself, is it worth it? Mm. Should I just <laughs> go and get mm. the Kindle version mm. and read? Mm. And the policies must change. Mm. I think something has to be done about it. Has it has to be done. Mm. And we mm. hope that governments will hear us. No, it's not government. even the main... You know, you know, we're looking at the micro. Mm. Mm. The assemblies, what are they doing? Mm. You see, I was just looking at, at the four courts of the uh, Ministry of Information. Mm -hmm. You have this large land size there that is unexploited. The Ministry of Information, is it possible that you put up four or five stalls, mm -hmm. bookstores, mm -hmm on that land, that people, the workers around mm. can assess, mm. come look at books that are available and buy them. You see, the Akramo Department Assembly, is it possible that they can work out with the book industry and see that every Sunday afternoon, the lorry parks are turned into book bazaars? Oh, that would be beautiful. You see? <laughs> so it, as Lana said, it has to be a conscious thing. Yeah. Our policy makers must be receptive to ideas. Yeah. You see, they must even fish out for innovative ideas. I agree. You go to Iraq, a war torn country, it's a tradition anyway, that on, by the roadsides, by the streets, are bookstores, mm -hmm. not necessarily stores that are locked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Open bookstores, mm -hmm. they close, they leave the books there, nobody will steal. Mm -hmm. You see, it tells you they have that it, books must be available. Yeah. They have to be available so that it entices you and there's no way you have an excuse to say, I'm not getting the and books to buy. It's easily accessible. accessible. You can just you see. So yeah. the policy, the initiatives must go down. The assemblies. I know I was saying, do you have contact? Can mm -hmm. it be possible that the assembly will dedicate one room as a bookstore? Mm -hmm. That if you want a book, come there, you will get it. And, the, and the, the prices of the books to be subsidized. Subsidized. There will be some discounts that will appeal to the people. Yeah. To get I'm, I'm, I want to share something with you. My father's other book, The Shadow of Wealth, yeah. published in 1971, in a matter of six months, had sold 570,000 copies. Wow. Today, I am unable to sell 570,000 copies <laughs> in the period of five years. Mm. Why is that so? You see, so it is the generation, the mindset of the people, the motivation by government. And Kuma himself was a writer. Yes. And was motivating children to read. Parents, teachers, public servants. It was in vogue at the time to have bookshelves in your halls that you stock books. That should become our new norm. <laughs> Having personal libraries. It would, yeah. it would encourage us. Yes. So... Mm. Earlier on, I was telling, I, I, I made mention of the fact that it's easier to get Kindle books, mm. as I said. Mm. Um, digital publishing, mm. e-books and all, are they now an enemy to the industry? Mm. Or are they are something that we are leveraging on? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, not, not at all. Mm. You know, um, you, see, you see how we, what, what we, the, the conversations we have with chocolate, for instance, and, and we say that let's try to get chocolate in more formats than just the cake. Mm. For me, every 
platform that helps to spread the written word is, is, uh, is acceptable and it is a good thing. It will not cannibalize. It will only come to add on. You know, um, so for instance, there are people, and so we must, we must satisfy all sorts of people. The, the, the thing we need to know as, as people in the industry is that the, the human race itself is transforming and we must also uh, transform uh, with this. About 10 years ago, there had been a prediction that the printing word, the printing format would die, <laughs> but here we are, it is growing. So um, let me start with Nana. Yes. Nana, you and I are wearing gigi today. <laughs> <laughs> the pros and cons of textbook publication mm. and creative publication in Ghana. I wanted us to look at it as textbooks versus novels and the advantages it has to the industry. Is it more profitable to publish textbooks than is it like than the fiction? I think I would defer to Mr. Yamon. Oh. He has much, much more experience on, on, in this. Okay. All right. Uh, you see, the publishing landscape and the specialization is such that you cannot equate any of the publishing uh, concepts to any of them. For instance, if you are into textbook publishing, you are doing textbook publishing. The one doing trade, fiction, novel, biographies, has its own strategy and philosophy. Mm. You see, so in in our publishing this thing, we always categorize. You see, you are a publisher. The next question that any expert will ask you: So, which genre are you into? You see, so are you into textbooks? Are you into trade books? Are you into even biographies, mm. which are under trade books? Are you doing academic publications? You see, then there are some who are doing publications for official purposes, mm, like yes. government announcements, government food. Ghana Publishing, for instance, is doing that. Mm. That's what we call the Gazette and the yeah. parliamentary publications and all that. So it, it's a strategy, it's a philosophy that you, you advance. Okay. Textbook publishing is basically to support education, you see. And those are materials that are always compliant with curriculum. Mm. It does not allow you to display your initiatives and your creativity. You are given a certain format mm. into which you need to fit your publishing this thing. So a writer writes to conform to a syllabus, you see. But when you come to creative writing or to publishing trade books, that is a very liberal area that it allows for anything under the sun. You see? Uh -huh. So, for textbook publishing, you are, it is targeted to the classroom and therefore also subjected to governmental or state interventions and controls. You see? So, for a textbook, as we recently we all heard, you must go through NACA, mm. the assessment body, for them okay. to look at it subject compliance, syllabus compliance, and then they approve it. Mm. For trade books, you can never subject trade books to any strict assessment, novels, fiction, because by their nature, they are creative works. And any attempt to do that is more or less like censorship, mm. which all over the world, people do not subscribe to. Okay. So textbook publishing is a unique area. But is it profitable? Profitable, yes. Over that the is that is the trade. cream the cream of publishing. Mm. You see, because you are looking at a school system where they are buying the books in the classroom for use. So if you have two point five million children going to school, wow, you can imagine. That's a huge. Uh -huh. <laughs> so for textbook publishing, it is capital intensive, but also profitable. Mm. Yes, because for the Commission of writers to write for you, uh, getting your illustrators, even going through the normal processes and printing the book. For instance, if you are doing a primary one English book as a publisher, you can never decide to go and print 2,000 copies. Because the primary one, for only primary one in this country, you are looking at about 500 to 600,000 people. Wow. So if you want a percentage of that market, 
you can go and print 2,000. At least you print 50,000 copies. Hmm. And 50,000 copies is quite an expensive yes. thing. Uh -huh. But that is where the money is in this country. You go to elsewhere, the, those doing trade books are the billionaires. Yeah. Because of the culture of reading. Yes. So in America, a sensational book comes out and you have 20 to 30 million people buying the book. You see? Uh -huh. So if we are able to also to do our own, mm. you realize that that departmental segregation will come. Because sometimes it's not even advantageous to be doing textbooks, you are doing trade books, and you see, it's, if you specialize, it's good. Mm. So you concentrate on what you know best and do. Uh, we'll get to that stage. Because uh, for novels, sell, publishing novels, publishing books, or, you know this country, it is not the culture to, to write biographies and autobiographies. Yeah. It's just that people have started doing it. But it's not popular. Mm. That somebody's biography or autobiography comes out. And we are all rushing to go and buy and read. This Kwame Nahoy's book that came up with this, all these controversies, I'm not sure the publisher sold even 50,000 copies. I'm not sure. No. You see, so such is the uh, death. That's why everybody is shifting to textbooks. Mm. For that place, you sell, you get your money. You at least get your ah. money back. Ah. So that is uh, textbook publishing is the cream for now. And, but uh, if you are doing your trade books and faculty for you, you are able to get the numbers. That is also another appreciable side. But as I told you, if it's not a bad listing for business for you to be selling, let's say, 500,000 copies of a novel. Yeah. That's a huge amount in this That's country. That's a huge amount. Yes. That's so uh, you need to appreciate the guiding principles, the philosophy that for each publisher who want to go into. Somebody decides I'm setting my publishing house and I'm doing children biographies. Mm. So he is into biographies, but for ages between, let's say, seven up to 13 years. You see, writing simple, simple biographies of known personalities for the children to mm. read and emulate. You see, that's why I'm saying that we have not made it a culture in this book, in this country, that books are cultural materials and also biographies are worth learning, reading, for us to take experiences from. Can you imagine that, for example, the first biography, you've read it. If you want to be a politician, oh, this is a book that you have to read. Mm. You see? So it still comes back to the culture that we have and what works for the publisher, yeah. what they want to specialize in. Yes. OK. OK. I get that. Nana, what do you want to add something? No. Okay. I you he is the expert. <laughs> <laughs> he is the expert. But then, don't you think that this is, in one way or the other, um, making a lot of uh, authors, wannabe authors or upcoming authors, um, scared to bring their manuscripts to the publishing house because they feel maybe the market is not there and the publisher might want to just focus on textbooks? Yeah, Can that's what that I'm as... saying. That there are some, for instance, and I know that I'm doing trade books. Mm. I don't do textbooks. Yeah. You see, so I have my network of where I want I can sell my books. So if you're a young publisher, you, a writer, you come and you are able to conform to our house, uh, our editorial, this thing. Because for instance, we want to go to our website, it is there. Uh, if you want to come to us to publish, these are the category of areas that we are looking at. Child labor, child slavery, modern day slavery, uh, child abuse, mm. women empowerment. We've listed them. So if you have books that are tailored toward this session, bring them. Oh. We'll publish them. For Please you. send your manuscripts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take advantage of those. Okay. So um, Nana. Yes. From an author perspective, what are some of the checks and balances that one would do before approaching a publisher? Ooh. Okay. So first, he's just mentioned one. Um, so know which publishers to take which uh, sort of uh, um, manuscripts to. Okay. okay. Um, fortunately, or yeah, maybe fortunately for us in Ghana, like you said, most publishers have not specialized yeah. too, too, too much. So there is a, a, a bit of leeway. But yeah, in, in advanced countries, there are some manuscripts that won't even 
go beyond the, the spam <laughs> or the, the, the trash folder. Mm. So know which one. But again, ensure that I, I tell people once you've written, ensure that you've done, your writer is his own first editor. Mm. Ensure that you've done all your checks and balances. Um, send to a few friends to read. Uh, once you are done, also check the second thing, check the author's format for the publisher's format for receiving manuscripts. Okay, some of them indicate that this is how I want it done, double spaced. Yeah. Um, this, if you have to print, you check all of all of that. Um, the the third thing I, I would always say is that be patient. Mm. <laughs> you know, especially if you want to go through traditional publishing. <laughs> I think Mr. Yamwa mentioned be patient. You know, um, you know the the famous story of uh, the, the the author of the Harry Potter series who was rejected about fourteen yeah. times. So yeah. you have to be patient and you have to you have to persevere. Um, and so when, once you send it, um, don't don't expect that your first manuscript uh, would, would go through. And even if that doesn't go through, keep on refining, keep on writing, keep on trying. You know, I think those are the basic things I would want to say for, for mm -hmm. um, a, a writer. But first of all, check uh, where you are sending to, uh, check the formats for receiving, and ensure that you fall within these things. And for the author, maybe just the final bit, network. Mm. You know, sometimes it's, he, he may be getting lots of emails yeah. unsolicited, but if you've met him at a, at a book fair before. Yeah. Like how I'm meeting him Exactly, now. <laughs> and you have spoken with him or you've met him at um, a literary function, so authors need to, to, to network. Perhaps that can also open um, a, a way for you uh, to, to, because in, in this world, everything is about uh, network. It's not just only about the, the, the formal roots. Yeah. 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 You see, and yeah. uh, as Anna says, publishers, we network. Uh, I may have received over 20, 30 manuscripts unsolicited. What I do usually is that I called the publisher and say, look, I have this bunch of works there. Are you interested? Mm. You see, if you can come over, or you, can, you can, I will send you the link. Go through them. What you, if you think some of them are interesting for you, contact the writer. You see, so you may have sent some books to me. I may not publish them, but I will send them out to some publishers. Maybe somebody will call you. Uh -huh, and then move on here. But we always advise that if you're an author, don't send your book to only one publisher. Yes, so. You need to spread it. To Somebody other. will call you. Okay. You see, uh -huh, and then you will get uh, sometimes. But publishers will always advise authors, as Nana said, to be patient. Hmm. You know, that, as I said, an editor can sit on one manuscript for one year, oh. hmm. depending on how difficult that book was oh. written. You know, because some people just construct and mm. they are just writing. <laughs> but the editor will have to construct the way. Sometimes your chapter 10, it's interestingly, will be the chapter, chapter one. one. <laughs> yeah. Your chapter 7 could should come into the middle. Mm. Change some words. Do this, one or two. So the editor's job is quite an elaborate thing. And the author who aspires to be very popular or wants to come out in that should be able to have that patience to wait for the work to be scrutinized. Mm. The, the editor will call you, sit down with you, and tell you, I'm changing this. I want you to go and reconstruct this area. Why? Because one, two, three, one, two, the storyline, what you are saying might not, at the end of the day, the, whole pe the person can read your whole story, but will not get anything out of your story. Out of it. Okay. You see, aha. Uh -huh. And I just want to bother you. I always meet my father's distance. He told me his one book in the African writers, and I know a woman in her prime. Yes. He submitted it to Heinemann, oh. UK. They rejected it. Mm. And someone, someone advised him that there is a, a very good woman in this country who is good, the late Ephesus Dalat. Mm. So my father handed over the manuscript to the woman. And my father's own testimony that the book was changed entirely. Mm. That he can confidently say the work there is not his. Mm. It's if yes. It went second time and it was admitted wow. by Hanuman. You see, so we need to appreciate, the authors especially, to appreciate the important role by editors. Yes. Mm. 
You see, it's like you are asking your child, uh, Nana, write about today's uh, encounter at school. Just write for me, let me see. The child would narrate what he or she experienced in the school. You see, would that make sense? So it is for you to oh, sit down oh. with the child. Oh, no, no, this one you are writing, I don't think it's right to, oh. ah, how did it happen? No, 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 no. This one we people read, take it out. Do this, oh. do this. So that interaction between the author and the editor okay. is very key. Yeah. You see, and that is one of the disadvantages of self-publishing. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. It's, it's, yeah. it's been an interesting discussion. Mm, right. Mm. Um, I wish we could stay here because <laughs> the more you speak, the more I, I get questions, even personal questions I ask you. <laughs> but as Nana advised, networking. That yes. means when I'm yeah. off camera, I can ask all oh, my yes. questions. Yes. So um, the last but not the least question, mm. what is the average capital required to publish in Ghana from, that is, Nana, I would like for you to approach it from the mm. author-funded yeah. alternative. Right. How much capital does a mm. person need? Mm. Also to self-publish, mm. how much capital? Mm. Traditionally, yeah. how much do you spend when mm. you have to publish? And then we conclude with whether there's a market for new books and new authors. Okay. So who no, do I it, 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 it depends yeah, um, on the... For the author funded, it depends on the um, the support system that you are using. Mm. So I prefer to again break it down uh, into the stages and then to give maybe some bulk figures. So first of all is the editing, okay. okay. And as as we said, ensure so even if you are self publishing, ensure yeah. that you are using a professional editor. editor. Because not everybody who reads or who has a degree in English or yeah. who understands <laughs> English can, can edit. You know, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. I was reading something yesterday, and then I realized that the date that was used in there was wrong. Mm. You, you don't know this by English. You know this by experience, because I know, I know what happened, and I know that the dates were yeah. wrong. So an editor can pick that up. So first of all, you have to pay for the editor. Mm. And most editors these days will pay, uh, will charge per page. So depending on the, num the manuscript that you have, they can charge anything between, say, 10 CDs to 50 CDs per page, wow. depending wow. on the experience of, of the... Per of page. The, yes, yes, per page. <laughs> yes. Experience of the editor. Again, <laughs> remember, like, when we are publishing, we do three rounds of editing. So that's all part of it. You know? mm. So the, the person who edits it comes to the author, it comes back, we review, edit a bit more, and comes back. You know? So that can be your range. So that can help. The second bit is the book design. Okay, so the book design also, uh, designing of the cover, yeah. and, and then sometimes you have to buy the cover um, uh, images, and then designing of the inside. If it has to come with illustrations, you also have to pay the illustrator. Okay, so that can also um, range from anything between a thousand Ghana cities upwards. Okay, mm. so, and then your next uh, cost center in this four, uh, uh, three prong uh, publishing, uh, space is the printing. Okay, so again, it depends on the number of copies of, of the book, whether you are printing black and white inside or color inside, and the, the number of copies that you are running. That I cannot give uh, an estimate because it depends on the quality of printer you are using and then um, the, number the, the, the number of pages and the quality. But mm. it, if, you, if you want to print, say, 500 copies, I don't think that you spend less than less than 3,000 Ghana cities, really, really on the low side. Hmm. But 500 copies, you could be sitting at a unit cost of a minimum of eight cities with a very good printer, hmm. you know. So um, uh, Mr. Yamwa can, can, can touch that. That's really on the low side. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at the very oh, small you know, print. The, the, the capital required is getting up. Like yes, yeah, so you, you, should, you should t take about 10,000 as hmm. a minimum. To, to get something out of 500 uh, copies. And then you would have to launch the book. But these days, you can do Zoom launches, which <laughs> yeah. also, which also Zoom work launches very, 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 very well. Um, <laughs> as to whether there is a market for new books, right. there always is a market for new books. Mm. There, especially in Ghana, I tell people, there's so much we have not written about. Yeah. So much. And so there is always room 
um, for, for new, new books. For new books. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, Nana has said it, and from the perspective of a self-publisher or a vanity publisher, you know, Nana will run around looking for editors. <laughs> Nana will sit for two hours waiting for an editor at a, very, a, a coffee shop. Mm. All those time are costed. Mm. Yes. But he is not costing them. The traditional publisher will cost them. Yeah. You see? So when you ask me cost of a book or cost of publishing in the country, I maintain permanent staff uh -huh. and commission staff. Commission staff are paid by hour. Wow. So they, all of them together, will constitute cost. Therefore, that is why sometimes you say the cost of uh, in the in-house publishing is sometimes expensive because all these factors come into play. You see, uh -huh. so before you do the pre-press, what we say the pre-press means from the manuscript, manuscript acquisition mm. to the point that the production will take the book to the press. That's the pre-press cost. Oh. That is always constant. Oh. Whether you print 10,000 copies, 20,000 copies, that pre-press cost is constant. What is adjusted or what is commensurate with the number of books that you are printing will be the cost of printing. Oh. You see, so your cost is pre-press cost, author's royalty. Yes. If author's royalty is 10% on the book and you decide after all the calculations that you are selling the book for 20 cities, it means you are paying the author two CDs per book. Oh. So if you print 50,000 copies, it means you have to guarantee the author 100,000 CDs. Those are cost. Mm. So that is the all factors. But if you want a liberal, this is that, oh, per book, how much was the printing cost? I can tell you for if I print one novel, it could cost me 60 cents or let's say five, five CDs. And therefore, if I print 1,000 copies, it's 5,000. If I'm printing 2,000 copies, it's 10,000 CDs. Oh. You add it to my pre-press cost. You see, and of course, the author's right. So if you want to publish a book, uh, at least you should be looking at an amount of about 20,000 CDs minimum mm. for a 2,000 print run, 2,000 copies of print run. Wow. Yes. You see. Uh -huh. That's money. That, that is outside... As I told you, those investments in machinery are long term. Mm. Because today, your, your, your machine, being the computers that we use, are very expensive. If you want something that is protected, that you will not have viruses and this thing, the Apple, the IBM are quite expensive. These are the machines that will guarantee you also the, uh, your safety of your files. Yeah. And of course, the softwares that we use, you can purchase a, a complete setup of InDesign yeah. for not less than $5,000. You can buy. You see, so cost is relative. It's relative. Yes, <laughs> but the, if you want that liberal design, as I told you, you should, you should get at least about $20,000. But I'm, I'm here book. asking myself, a young author who has just completed school, the manuscripts, um, how do they raise the 20000 To them, it's money. It's... Mm. Not to them, it's money. It's money. It's money. Yeah. Money that they have to get or have to wait for you to approve their management. Yes. And then you yeah. invest it into their book. That's not easy to come by. Well, it is true. But that is why you also, also always want to have a, the publisher to get your manuscript so that that cost is taken off your head. Mm. But as a wanted advice I also give to authors or prospective writers is that do not, in the meantime, when you are starting, do not calculate your revenues or your incomes with the book you are writing. Exactly. <laughs> if you expect to be paid by what mm -hmm. you have, at least for the next three years, you, 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 you go hungry mm. and you'll be desperate. Mm. So you need to have, find the work, do the writing as a spare job, do good work once you are accepted to the system, then you can stop your work, concentrate on writing. Because if Nana is able to take your work and is guaranteeing you, let's say, the whole year, giving you 50,000 CDs, 100,000 CDs, you can afford to stop whatever you are doing and concentrate on writing. You see? But if you are starting as a writer, 
and you are expecting that the revenues will come for you to take care of yourself, you'll be disappointed. Oh. You'll be disappointed. It, writing is not an immediate revenue generator. Yeah. It takes and time. It takes time. And that is, the, your prospective writers, they must take you. Otherwise, we are all potential writers. Everybody has a story to tell. Yeah. You see, and these stories are written to give each other experiences. We learn from each other. You mm. see, as a woman, you may have found certain challenges mm. growing up, even within the, the business field. You write. Those coming after you will read and they will learn. They'll learn from us. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. I'm, I want to clap. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a very um, yeah. informative session. Like, I have learned a lot. And I'm sure those out there too are learning mm. quite a lot. So, um, in conclusion, or your closing remarks, I would want you to tell everybody how they could reach you, your website, the name of your publishing house, and so that if anyone has any manuscripts, that they want to send to you, they would know how to send it to you, how to also just get advice from you. If we are, like, give us access. So the floor is yours, Mr. Yamwa. All right. Uh, I would mention my name again, as I could do Yamwa. I'm a publisher. My publishing house name is ADEX Educational Publication. A-D-A-E-X Educational Publication. The website is www.adexpubs. There's an S. A D A E X P U B S dot com. If you want to work with us, we have listed what we want you to write and submit to us. So that's what we call the criteria for the writing list that we want to accept as manuscripts. And I was telling some of you because the society, the country, or the world is being challenged. These are contemporary where, uh, uh, issues. issues that we believe that everybody should have the opportunity to read experiences of mm. each other. So you you have child slavery, female genital mutilation, all those issues. We are particularly interested in women issues. So that uh, so if you are challenged as a woman, you put your story together. We come, we will help you to publish them. You see, uh -huh. and of course, my advice is that at all times, try to read a lot. If you want to be a writer, you must read. Oh, true. If you want to be a writer, you must read. You just don't come and say I'm a writer and then you put something out. You you, you immediately somebody sees your work, they see that either you are desperate or you are a novice. <laughs> You see, uh, so read a lot, get the styles. Mm -hmm. You see, writers have each writer, experienced writers have their styles. Which one are you following? You see, you, you, you should get, get a, certain, a certain club that you are following, and your style will conform to that sort of club. That sort of club. You see, so that is what you need to be looking at. Thank uh -huh. you. Right. Thank you. No, no. Yeah, so uh, our publishing house is Dark Publi and Associates. So um, our website is Dark Publi, D A K P A B L I dot com. So when you get there, you get uh, our contact details. If you reach out and we cannot publish you, we can always link you to um, another publisher. So uh, let's create a reading nation. Let's create a reading <laughs> nation. Wow. Thank you for coming. For right. honoring our invitation. Right. Mm. We are very grateful. All right. We hope to have you here for part two because I feel there's a lot more we can expand on and go into details. And to you, other who have been watching, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. My name is Fafali. Stay safe. Please wear your mask always. See you next time. Bye.